Uh, you know, our two games this week have been canceled. We're going to try to have some really good practices. We called a couple Big East schools, um, a school in the SEC, trying to get games, a team in the Mountain West. We weren't able to do that. So we'll continue to look for a game for Saturday. I don't think it'll happen, but we'll continue to practice and try to get better and just keep these guys focused for the next two or three games of the season. What's a conversation like that go? How, how does that go with this? I know it's uncharted territory, but, but what are those conversations like when you make the calls? You know what? I call those guys and just let them know that we're, we, we need a game. And, you know, they'll say they need a game. And then it comes down to who wants to travel. Um, some of the teams want to play, but they feel like they may need to play a team with a higher net. Some teams want to play, but they may not can get the game on the date that we want. You know, I'm just trying to find games. Like, we need a game this week that would be great. I don't want these guys to get rusty or have to sit out an entire week before we play our next game. I'm looking for teams that might help our own tournament resume. You know, I need a team that's got a high net, but we really want to play anyone at this point, just not to stay rusty, no matter what. But it would be great if we could get a team with a high net. And how frustrating is it that this keeps happening, happening even though you, you, know, you guys aren't doing anything wrong? You know, it's something you can't control. I feel sorry for, you know, all the teams that had to cancel for COVID. We went through the same situation. When we went to South Dakota, you know, these kids are practicing, and all of a sudden the next day they got COVID. So, you know, as an athlete, you're on the front line. A coach, you're on the front line. So things like this happen. It's out of our control, and all we can do is just not take a setback, continue to get better, and just control what we can control. We got to stay sharp. We got to stay in tip-top shape and just got to keep getting better there's any conversations happening within the conference of maybe swapping games or moving games around to help you guys that are fighting for a tournament berth maybe there's a way to switch an opponent to get that game in I know that would be in the conference's interest if they could do it are they having those conversations that you're aware of I think that's gonna happen right now we have two games left with Tulane and Temple but my gut feeling is that we will play um, someone else during that time next week not really sure who, but I definitely think that's going to happen. I think they want to try to match certain teams up, but I think they're looking at everyone's schedule to try to see if that can get done. Is Russ really a, a real worry? I know you've mentioned it more than once, but um, I know Ricky Council said after the Memphis game when you guys lost that, that, that those long breaks are more of a detriment than a benefit. Is that, is that something you feel too? I think the kids were more disappointed than anything because, you know, this time of year you've been practicing pretty much since June, July, and those guys want to play in games. I've been trying to do a better job of cutting our practices, making them really short, you know, an hour, hour, 15 minutes, where we get a lot of scrimmaging in, we get a lot of up and down in. But I, I, I think it hurts you at times, but we don't want to have any setbacks. We have a lot, you know, to lose. So I told the guys, no matter what the situation is, we got to continue to be sharp. We got to continue to get better. And we got to continue to take care of ourselves off the court. I know you said that you, would, you guys would be willing to go on the road, uh, probably if you know the incentive was right. Could you just kind of explain that balancing act that you guys have to do where, you know, you could probably get a road game right now, you know, against a, a back end, you know, Q1 or top 75 team. Uh, but, you know, the risk of, you know, potentially losing, is that kind of the, the, the two things that you have to weigh at, at this point? You know what? We've we're just been trying to get a game. We call like four or five teams to try to get a home game, and none of those teams wanted to play. Um, two of those teams we called and said we would travel, but they didn't want to play those games because it didn't work out on the date that we wanted. Even though we wanted to travel, that date for them didn't work out. I felt like... If we were coming to your home building, we should at least get the date. So we couldn't come to a conclusion on that date. So right now, you know, we're just going to sit back. Hopefully we can find a team that's got a, a good net, 
that would help us. But I really think it's hard right now for teams to be willing to go out of conference and play basketball games this time of year. I called two teams that wanted to play, but they were a little banged up and they couldn't, you know, have enough guys to come in and play. They just didn't feel like they had enough guys that they could compete at a high level. It sort of sounds like two two other two two other teams that are in a similar boat are SMU and Memphis. So getting them on the schedule still makes a lot of sense for all parties wherever it's played because everybody's kind of in that same area of the net rankings. Am I, am I missing that or is that is that accurate? I think you're accurate. I, I think um, based on everything I've been told that I think that um, Memphis, SMU, or someone else will be on our schedule at the end of this conference. I'm not really sure. Nothing is set in stone. We only have two games left. But I just got a feeling something is going to change, and we may know something today. Have you talked to the guys at all about the potential importance of that conference tournament and, and what may be on the line? I know that's looking ahead a little bit, and I know that's an unknown anyway, but if things don't fall the right way, it may be a win and in type situation. You know what? I hadn't talked about the conference tournament. Early on in the season, I never talked about championships. I never talked about getting to the NCAA tournament. I talked about getting better every game. But now we have two games left, and I want these guys to stay focused. So I'm starting to mention championship a lot more because they know what is at stake now, and I just want to make sure these guys are prepared and ready to come to practice with a lot of energy because we got two games left in the season. And, again, we just have to stay sharp because we have a lot on the line. Without a doubt, he was huge that game. Morris had five block shots, which was a career high. We chart how many times you touch the ball, like whether it's an offensive or defensive rebound, and he charted out he had 15. I thought he was great in ball screens. He did a great job of helping on Giroux. He did a great job of helping on Sasser. He was huge that game. We couldn't get it to him to the post as much as we wanted, because Houston just one of those teams, it's hard to throw it in the low post because they, they just – they come to the low post and they ambush you. Like, they're going to have two guys on top of you so quickly to it's hard for you to make a post move. So he couldn't get a lot of touches on offense. But he did a great job on defense, and I felt like that was one of the keys for us winning that game. How impressed are you with the guys being able to make not just a halftime adjustment but an in-game, it seemed like anyway – halfway through that first half when, when they were clearly keying in on Mo for you guys to totally switch it up and do it effectively. That, that's, is that hard to do in a game? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, we have a lot of senior – not senior leadership, but guys who have played college basketball now, Al Tariq Gilbert, Tyson, Etienne, Dexter Dennis, and those guys are leaders on the floor. They're coaches on the floor, and they're good at making adjustments. You know, we couldn't get anything going – Early in the first 10 minutes of the game, we were trying to run our follow five, but they were trapping those ball screens. They did a good job of guarding us off the bounce. We had to go a little bit more to motion. Um, those guys didn't get down. When we were down 12 points, we went to the bench. I thought Ricky Council gave us a big-time punch with those 10 points. I thought Clarence Jackson came in and was a spark, you know, got a couple offensive rebounds. And then when we got those starters back in, I thought they sealed it because I thought they really started to play well and they clicked on offense and we were able to pull out the win. Just how important has an Altery Gilbert been this last month? It seems like he's really, you know, taking things to a next level at the second half of the conference play. He's been more of a leader. You know, when he first got here, he wasn't talking as much. You know, it was his first time on campus, his first time being with a new coaching staff. And, you know, we have to earn that trust. And, you know, we did a lot of meeting with him. Um, I think the trust level got better. I was able to trust him more. And we give him a lot of rope. He's like an extension of our coaching staff on the floor. And his leadership has been great. You know, he's always been one of those guys that never turned the ball over. And now he's starting to make shots late in the game to help us win ball games. Starting with the UCF game, I think making that big shot at the end of the game really gave him a lot of confidence. 
And that shot against Houston right there at the end, I think we were up two. We went one, four flat because we trust him, Tyson, and Dexter, all those guys late in the game to be able to go make plays. And he drove the ball, shot fake, got us a layup. So it's just that trust factor. I trust him. He trusts us. And those guys have been making great decisions late in the game. We saw another conference player of the week award for Tyson. Can you tell us why he should be the conference player of the year? No, he's just one of those guys that has really worked at it. He can score it on all three levels. He competes on the defensive end. Um, he's a, a guy that shoots 40% from the three-point line. He's a guy that can play multiple positions. Um, a lot of people didn't know this, but, you know, the last game, Tyson played a lot of the point guard spot. He runs point for us in practice. It's like having two point guards on the floor. He's had a great year. Um, he's one of the leaders in scoring, one of the leaders in three-point percentage. And I think he's, his, his defensive ability is a little underrated. He does a good job of guarding, guarding the second-best score on the other team. I think you have to talk to those kids on a daily basis about mental health. You know, you just want to make sure they're good. You never know. A lot of kids have stuff going at home, stuff dealing with their girlfriends. Sometimes it's about playing time. And you just want to know what's going on in their life. And if there's any way possible that I can help them, I would love to do that. So you have to have a relationship with them. If it's something that they need counseling or something like that, we just let them know that, if it's something that we can't help you with and this is a matter you need to seek someone else, we'll try to get you that help as well. But I think our job, guys, have done a fantastic job of keeping us up to date on everything that's going on in their life, and we haven't had any issues so far. I know the future's unknown for you, and even within the season or your, your coaching career, but how much have you been able to enjoy what's gone on and what this team's achieved and, and proving a, a whole lot of people wrong? Is it is it as fun as you had imagined, or, or just how is how are you trying to take all this in? It's been fun, you know. Like I said, it's not about me. I just, you know, the staff, myself, we just wanted to put these guys in position to compete. When we first had our first team meeting, we told them, this is your team. We want you to take control of this team, be a leader. We're going to make sure you guys are organized. We're going to make sure you guys are in tip-top shape. We're going to make sure you guys are ready to compete. But we want you to take on leadership of this team. And we just tried to make it a lot of fun. These guys are having fun. We're playing fun ball. Everybody is taking shots. We're sharing the ball, playing with their teammates, and I think they're really enjoying the fact that they're winning and we're on a five-game winning streak, and those guys are just getting a lot of confidence.